So in this example, we want to find the maximum volume of a box that is resting on the XY plane with one vertex at the origin. Okay, and that's what you see here in the figure. Okay, so this is at the origin. Okay, we have our box here. Okay, and the opposite point is on the plane. Okay, the plane is given as 2x plus 4y plus z equals 8. Okay, so let's set up our equations. Okay. And so what we're going to do, this is an optimization problem, okay? So in this case, uh, we're going to use Lagrange multipliers, okay? So the volume, okay? So the volume, let V, let's use V as the volume. So this is going to be X times Y times Z. So this is, this is our primary equation, okay? This is what we want to, right? This is what we want to uh, maximize, okay? The other equation is our constraint. Okay, our constraint is that we want the uh, we want the the point. Okay, we want this uh, this point here on the box, this vertex, this, this vertice, or this vertex. We want it to be on the plane. Okay. All right. So that means we have two x plus four y plus z equals to eight. Okay. So that is our constraint. Okay. All right. So from here, okay, we can set up our our function. Okay. So we're going to let uh, we're going to define we're going to define f of x y z to be equal to x times y times z, and then we're going to let g of x y z to be equal to uh, 2x plus 4y plus z minus 8. Okay. All right. So now we're going to, so we're going to take the difference, right? So we're going to have a new function called x, a function of x, y, z lambda. So that's going to be equal to f x, y, z minus lambda times g of, uh, g, g of x, y, z. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so that means we're going to have, okay, so we have x, y, z minus lambda times 2x plus 4y plus z minus 8. Okay, and then this is going to give us x, y, z minus 2 x lambda minus 4y lambda plus 8 lambda. Okay. Okay, so then from here we're going to take, uh, let's see, we have, sorry, let's see, I think I left something out here. Sorry, this is going to be for minus, I left out z, so it's be minus lambda z. Minus z lambda plus eight lambda. Okay, so now let's just have all the terms there now. Okay, so now we're going to take the the partials of these. Okay, the partial of f with respect to x, the partial of f with respect to y, the partial of f with respect to z, the partial of f with respect to lambda. Set and then from there we have our system. We have a system of equations, and we want to, and we can use that to solve for uh, x, y, and z. Okay, so let's first take the partial of f with respect to x. Okay, so we have an x here, an x here. So that means we're going to get yz minus minus, uh, let's see, 2 lambda. Yeah, okay. The next one we have is, or next one we want to do is find the partial of f with respect to y. So we have this one, this term, and this term. So that's going to give us xz minus 4 lambda. Okay. 
Right, now we're going to take the parcel of F with respect to Z. So, okay, so. okay, so we have a Z here. Uh, we have a Z here. Okay, so that's going to give us X, Y minus Z. Okay. Minus, oh no, sorry, not Z, sorry, lambda. Okay, since we're treating z as a uh, we're treating z as a as a variable, and so everything else will be a constant. Okay, so now we need to take uh, so we need to take the parcel with respect to lambda. So this has lambda. This has lambda. This has lambda. This has lambda. So digging the parcel of f with respect to lambda, that's going to leave us with minus two x minus four y minus z plus eight okay so from here now we can go ahead and uh, solve for we can go ahead and solve for our variables okay so let's first solve for lambda uh, from using the parcel of f with respect to x okay so we okay so this we have we're going to set these equal to zero So yz minus 2 lambda equal to 0. So that implies that lambda must be equal to yz over 2. Okay. All right. So let's, we're going to go back to this later. Okay. Um, okay. And let's go to the next one. Okay. Oops. Let's see, that's going to give us, so setting this equal to 0. So that's going to be xz minus 4 lambda, or sorry, xz equals 2, or xz minus 4 lambda equals 0. Okay. And then from here we have, okay, xy minus lambda equals 0. So that's going to give us x, y minus lambda equals to zero. Okay. All right. So let's look at these. Okay. Let's call this equation one. This is equation two. Okay. All right. So from equation one, okay, um, we can use equation one and lambda, and then from there we can get we can get y in terms of x. Okay, so, so we have x, z, okay, minus 4 times lambda. Lambda was, was uh, y times z over 2. Okay. And then this is all equal to 0. So that means, that means we're going to have x, z minus 2, y, z. Okay. Okay, so that will give us 2yz equals to xz. So that implies that y, okay, so we can cancel out z here because z, or z can't be 0. Okay. All right. So now... So I have to plug in my outlet there. Sorry, or plug in the charger. Okay, so now, so y, okay, so that means uh, canceling out z, so that means y is going to be equal to uh, 1 half x. Okay. Let's see, so is that, yep, so we get that point. Okay, so let's, we're going to use this later, okay. So now let's go to the equation, to the second equation, okay? So the second equation, okay, we're going to, we have x times y minus lambda. Lambda was y times z over 2. Okay, 
So then we have that uh, this is going to give us 2xy. So just multiply it through by 2. Okay. So then from here, uh, we're going to have 2xy equals to yz. So again, canceling out the y, okay, because we can assume that y is y can't be zero. Again, uh, the reason we can't assume that y and and uh, z can't be zero is because we're looking for the point on the plane here, okay. So looking at this point, so we don't want we we don't want the point on the origin, okay. We want the point on the plane, okay. All right. So then, so canceling out y, we're left with z equals to 2x. Okay, so now we have y in terms of x. Okay, All right. we have y in terms of x, we have z in terms of x. Okay, so we can substitute those into, into here, into the, into the partial of f with respect to lambda. Okay. Okay, so looking at this one, okay, we have minus 2x minus 4 times y, y is 1 half x minus z, z is 2x plus 8, okay. And remember, we're setting this equal to, right, we have to set this equal to 0. Okay, so let's simplify this. We're going to get minus 2x. Minus 2x minus 2x plus 8. Okay, so this is going to give us minus 6x plus 8 equals to 0. So therefore, okay, so that means, right, x is going to be equal to 8, 6, and that's the same as 4 thirds, okay. All right, so we found the value for x. So now we can just substitute back into, we can substitute x equals 4 thirds into here and here. Okay. Okay, so, so we know that x is 4 thirds. Okay. So that means y is going to be 1 half 4 thirds. So that's going to give us a value of 2 thirds. Okay, and then for z, we have z was equal to 2 times x. Okay, so x was 4 thirds. Okay, so that's going to give us 8 thirds. Okay, so we have x, y, and z. Okay, so that is, right, so those are the, uh, that's, the uh, the coordinate okay that we need okay so that's okay so we want to find the maximum volume now all right so we can take and multiply these okay so the volume okay so for x y and z this gives us the right this is giving us the maximum volume that we need Okay, so, so this is going to be 4 thirds times 2 thirds times 8 thirds, okay. All right, so multiplying all those out, okay, we're going to get, let's see, um, just a quick calculation here. So that should be... Yeah, 60, yeah, that's going to give us, oh yeah, 64 over, that makes sense, 64 over 27, okay. Okay, so yeah, so we have 4 times 2, 8, and then times 8 will be 64, and then over 27. So this is the, the maximum volume, okay, and this is going to be in units cubed, okay.